Welcome to Roy in a Flash. My name is Carmelo Soleil of the Sonua Kitchen. Today we'll be making a chocolate sauce. So a really nice versatile chocolate sauce that you can use on whatever desserts that you, uh, that you have on hand. Uh, you could have it just with fruit. Uh, so by now you probably already know about the Omni Blender. I've already done a few videos uh, featuring it and I also talk about it more in length uh, on my blog. Uh, there's a page showing at the bottom of the screen right now. So the Omni Blender, a uh, more affordable, considerably more affordable three horsepower blender. Um, it's $250 plus shipping, so you're talking about quite a bit cheaper than comparable machines on the market. Uh, it does a great job at uh, blending greens or making creamy uh, textures, consistency. For um, either someone that's into raw food, because uh, you, you know, you use the blender so often, like we use it four or five times a day. Or maybe just you want you know, a good appliance to uh, prepare some you know, quick, healthy meals. So power, uh, the, the high power blender is super for that. The Omni, some good things about it. It's got a good size container. Uh, it's a squarish container, makes it really easy to get all the, uh, the stuff out of there uh, with a spatula. Uh, it's got a six blade uh, that comes with the Omni. It's an electronic controlled uh, blender with uh, predetermined cycles. So 35, 60 and 90 second cycles. You can also do it manually with the low, medium and high buttons. And there's a pulse. And what else? It's got great warranty, seven year warranty. Um, and the guy who's importing them, uh, we're, friend, uh, we're friends of his. and. He's a really awesome guy, uh, honest and uh, really earnest guy. So you can trust that uh, if ever you have any trouble with uh, your blender, you can just call Thomas and he's gonna take care of that for you. And what else? Anyways, we're so, uh, we actually met Thomas in, on one of our uh, tours around the States and um, we're so impressed with the blender that I accepted uh, Thomas's uh, offer to write a book for the blender. So, Deliciously Raw, uh, I wrote especially for the Omni Blender and it comes with every blender uh, when it ships in the box. Alright, so. so I guess we're all set to go. Uh, the chocolate sauce, as a base I'm using uh, pecans that I soaked overnight. Again, when you soak nuts and seeds, you know that it makes them alkaline because they're um, naturally they're acidic. So it makes them alkaline, more digestible, and uh, also in, increases the uh, nutritional value. So it makes sense all around to soak your nuts uh, and seeds if you can. Also, just uh, pay attention, there are certain recipes, it, it should really say that the nuts need to be soaked. Otherwise, by default, it means they're dry, and that might have an impact on the consistency of the recipe. So you don't want to soak nuts when it uh, doesn't specify to do so. What you could do though is soak your nuts and then dehydrate them and then that way you always have some dry um, nuts on hand that have been uh, pre-soaked. So some pecans. Okay I like to use a mixture of uh, cacao powder and carob. Why? Well because uh, carob it's just, it's got a different uh, nutritional value than the cacao um, and the flavor, I mean when, when you use mostly cacao you can't really detect the carob flavor. So I like to use both, usually three to one sort of thing. So I'm using a bit of both in here. Usually I use less uh, cacao, uh, less uh, carob than cacao. Uh, a little bit of salt. Salt always amps up the flavors some sweetener so I would suggest whatever liquid sweetener that you feel comfortable with I know in the last uh, couple of years I've shifted from using agave to using honey and um, coconut nectar which I really love agave unfortunately um, while it was really handy being such a uh, liquid sweetener that can be added to you know almost anything by hand um, unfortunately, the, um, it's got such a high fructose content, uh, concentrated fructose, uh, which makes it actually even worse than corn syrup in some uh, aspects. So, 
I would suggest uh, moving away from that, even though it is not glycemic, it still has, you know, a lot of negative uh, aspects of it. So coconut nectar and honey is what I use, but if you feel okay with agave, just go ahead with that. I'm using a mixture of both here, about half, uh, half honey, half coconut nectar. And I'm also using maple syrup. So maple syrup, although it's not raw, um, and you'll see in you know many of my recipes there is you know occasionally some ingredients that aren't raw, and that's totally fine with me because I like things that uh, taste good. Uh, and I'm not, I don't think making raw into a religion is a very healthy approach. You know, I think you want to include as much raw as you can in your diet and you'll benefit, you know, from whatever percentage of raw you eat. But to, you know, always, I mean, it's great if you can have all raw ingredients, but um, it's not a necessity. And certainly that's something you have to feel for yourself. So, but I'm okay with uh, using some maple syrup and in combination with cacao, it, it just really goes super well enhances the flavor so using some maple syrup and then you know if you do use maple syrup you know if you can go organic uh, that's always a good thing and being I'm Canadian so I guess it would be a sad thing if I couldn't use maple syrup some vanilla so I like to use uh, liquid vanilla so that's a mixture of vanilla beans that have been blended in water you could also use a vanilla extract Okay, and then finally some, well, not finally actually, I just forgot something else, some water. And, okay, the last thing we're going to use is coconut oil. So, if you notice, I've got this, it's like a bain-marie, so it's basically um, a container with uh, warm to hot water in there, and then another container that fits on top, and that's got my coconut oil. Coconut, coconut oil is usually solid at room temperature. Um, so unless you live in the tropics or somewhere really warm, you'll most likely need to um, melt your coconut oil first. So you could also put it in the dehydrator. That's another great idea to get it to warm up. If you use this method, I strongly recommend um, moving the uh, coconut oil around because you don't want it to be exposed to heat and, and have the enzymes uh, affected by uh, the heat. So the coconut oil, I'm going to measure three tablespoons and the ingredients, well, you can find the exact recipe uh, on my blog, I'll have a link showing at the bottom of the video. Alrighty, and we're all set. So I think I'm not going to take any chances and uh, use the temper. Wanted to believe it, I forgot it again. <laughs> Just a sec. Alrighty, so I've got the temper. I'm just gonna uh, put it there and then um, just in case things need a, a bit of help to move around. And that's it. I'm gonna use uh, the 35 second cycle and see uh, if that does it. pretty good. So the key thing really is that you want to make sure that your pecans are all dissolved and I don't see any pieces so yeah. All right so this looks like the 35 seconds did the trick. I'm just gonna transfer the sauce. And the great thing about this sauce, uh, because of the coconut oil, the consistency is going to change. Um, especially because I recommend uh, s storing it in the fridge, so where the, it will keep for about five days um, in the fridge. But what's going to happen though, it, uh, because of the coconut oil, it's going to get thicker. So, and at that point, you could even use it as a spread. Uh, it will work really well for that, or as icing even for a cake or cookies or whatever. But at this stage, when it's uh, 
uh, soft like this, liquid, uh, you can just drizzle it on your ice cream or whatever desserts or just on fruit. So there you go, a lovely, really quick, uh, all-purpose chocolate sauce that's all raw. And again, you join me, uh, Carmela Soleil of the Sonia Kitchen for another Raw in a Flash episode. Thanks again for joining me today and I'll see you again very soon.